is Mitin Hamir and welcome to my channel. So for today we're gonna learn about kata bantu. In English, helping words. This is part two. But before I begin, for this video, I'm just gonna use informal pronunciation. For those of you who still not clear yet, what is informal pronunciation? Please watch my number 53 video which is about confusing pronunciation. So this is part 2. Make sure you watch part 1 first before you watch this one. So kata bantu, helping words, words that present to help the predicate of a sentence. So it's present before the frasa kerja, the verb or frasa adjective, the adjective. And also frasa sendi nama. So this one, part two, we gonna learn about kata bantu ragam. So kata is word, bantu is help. Kata bantu helping words. Ragam is manner. So kata bantu ragam basically about to explain the feelings related to behavior. So in Malay, menjelaskan ragam perasaan berkaitan perbuatan menjelaskan ragam perasaan berkaitan perbuatan so menjelaskan from the root word jelas so jelas is clear so menjelaskan is to explain ragam is manner here ragam perasaan perasaan is feelings so i don't want to translate manner of feelings because that's not exist in english so, I just translate feelings related berkaitan perbuatan behavior. So, menjelaskan ragam perasaan berkaitan perbuatan. So, kata bantu ragam, we have three categories. And before you watch this video also, please watch the five Malay common words because I explain certain words there and I'm not going to repeat it here. So I'm going to give you the link down below. Please check it out. So the first one, hendak or kemahuan melakukan sesuatu. Hendak or kemahuan melakukan sesuatu. So it means one or desire to do something. So hendak or mahu is one. Kemahuan, prefix ke, plus the root word mahu, plus the suffix an. Kemahuan is desire. Melakukan, to do, sesuatu is something. So, hendak or kemahuan, melakukan sesuatu. One or desire to do something. That's the first one. The second one is, mesti melakukan sesuatu. Mesti melakukan sesuatu. So, mesti is must. Melakukan is do. Sesuatu is something. So, must do something. Mesti melakukan sesuatu. And the third one, mampu melakukan sesuatu. Mampu melakukan sesuatu. So, mampu is able. Melakukan do. Sesuatu is something. So, able to do something. We start with the first one. Hendak or kemahuan melakukan sesuatu. In English, it means one or desire to do something. So, under this category, you have three words. Hendak, enggan, mahu. Hendak, enggan, mahu. So, we start with the first one. Hendak. Hendak means one. So, I give formal Malay example here. Lily hendak ke panggung wayang. Lily hendak ke panggung wayang. In English, it means Lily wants to go to cinema. So, hendak means one. Ke is to panggung wayang is cinema. So, in Malay is enough. In formal Malay sentence, you say Lily hendak ke panggung wayang. But for English, you have to say Lily wants to go to cinema. So, Malay is kind of like simplified version here. However, for speaking, we don't say something like that. We just say, Lily nak pergi cinema. 
Lily nak pergi cinema. So Lily nak, instead of we use the word hendak, we shorten to the word nak. We don't use the word ke here. We just remove it and replace with the word pergi. Pergi means go. So pergi cinema. We don't say panggung wayang, we say cinema. Okay, that's about hendak. Now we move on to the second word, enggan. Enggan. So, enggan is don't want. Okay? So, one word in Malay presents three words in English. Do not want. Right? So, this is only one word. Enggan. So, I give formal Malay example here. Ali enggan ke sekolah. Ali enggan ke sekolah. So, in English it means Ali does not want to go to school. So, Ali enggan, Ali don't want ke tu sekolah. However, for speaking, we just say Ali tak nak pergi sekolah. Ali tak nak pergi sekolah. So, instead of you say the word enggan, enggan sounds too formal to us. So, we say the word tak nak. So, tak from the word tidak, which means not. Nak from the word hendak, which means want. But it doesn't exist, the word tidak hendak. That is totally wrong. Tak nak. But if you want to say fully for formal one, it will be tidak mahu. I've explained in previous video about it. Please check it out. So, Ali tak nak pergi sekolah. Pergi is go here. Okay, that's about enggan. Now we move on to the word mahu. Mahu. So, mahu means one. I give example here. Nini tidak mahu berkongsi makanan. Nini tidak mahu berkongsi makanan. So, in English it means Nini does not want to share food. Nini tidak, not, does not here. Mahu is one. So, tidak mahu is does not want. Berkongsi from the root word kongsi, share. Makanan is food. So, Nini tidak mahu berkongsi makanan. Between hendak and mahu, people prefer to use the word nak. Okay? For that, please watch my video. However, let's see how people replace this word tidak mahu for speaking. Nini tak mahu kongsi makanan. Nini tak mau kongsi makanan. Nini tak nak kongsi makanan. So, these are the options available for you if you want to say tidak mahu in speaking version. Well, that's finished the first category. Now, we move on to the second one. Second one, mesti melakukan sesuatu. So, must do something. So, under this category, we have three words. Harus, mesti, patut. Harus, mesti, patut. So, we're going to start with the first one, harus. There's three meanings of harus in Malay. So, basically, harus you may do or you may not do. Okay? It's okay for you to do and it's okay for you to not do. And in another word, it also means it's encouraged for you to do. And next meaning is perhaps or maybe. And last one, should. So, I give the former example here. Kita harus bersabar dalam menempuh dugaan hidup. Kita harus bersabar dalam menempuh dugaan hidup. So, in English it means... We should be patient when we go through life tests. So, kita, we, harus, should. I just translate should here but reality is as I've mentioned previously, bersabar, the root word here is sabar, patient. Dalam in, menempuh, the root word here actually tempuh. So, prefix men plus the root word tempuh means go through Okay, so dugaan is test, hidup is life. So dugaan hidup, life test. Basically, dugaan is something unpleasant. Okay, if you mention life test, happiness also is a test and sadness also 
is a test. So dugaan hidup is something negative, something which makes you feel negative. But for speaking, we don't say something like that. We just say kita harus sabar tempuh dugaan hidup. Or some people also use the word bersabar. Kita harus bersabar tempuh dugaan hidup. However, some people don't like to use the word tempoh. They will say the word lalui. So, lalu is the root word and you add the prefix me, melalu plus the suffix e. So, melalui is go through. But for speaking, we shorten to lalui. Kita harus sabar lalui dugaan hidup. That's about harus. Now we move on to mesti, mesti, must. So harus is not as strong as mesti, right? So I give formal example here. Kamu mesti meninggalkan tabiat buruk malas mandi itu. Kamu mesti meninggalkan tabiat buruk malas mandi itu. So in English, it means you must leave that bad habit, lazy to shower. So, kamu, you, mesti, must, meninggalkan from the root word tinggal. Tinggal is leave. So, basically, the prefix men plus the root word tinggal plus the suffix kan. So, meninggalkan, tabiat, habit, buruk, bad habit, right? Tabiat buruk is bad habit. Malas is lazy, mandi is shower, itu is that. Kamu mesti meninggalkan tabiat buruk malas mandi itu. However, for speaking, we don't say something like that. We just say, kamu mesti tinggalkan tabiat buruk malas mandi itu. Kamu mesti tinggalkan tabiat buruk malas mandi itu. So, instead of you say the word meninggalkan, you just say tinggalkan. Okay? Tinggalkan. Kamu mesti tinggalkan tabiat buruk malas mandi itu. So, itu also we shorten to to. Okay, we done with the word mesti. Now, we move on to the last word for this one. Patut. So, patut means should. So, I give formal Malay example here. Ali patut didenda kerana datang lewat ke sekolah. Ali patut didenda kerana datang lewat ke sekolah. So, in English it means Ali should be punished for coming late to school. Ali should be punished for coming late to school. So, Ali patut, Ali should didenda. The root word here is denda. So, denda is Fine. Okay, so did and the here is like punish. Passive form of it. Kerana, because, datang, come. Lewat, late, ke, tu, sekolah is school. Ali patut did and the, kerana, datang, lewat, ke sekolah. However, for speaking, we don't say something like that. We just say, Ali patut kena denda sebab datang, lewat, ke sekolah. Ali patut kena denda sebab datang lewat sekolah. So, instead of we say di denda, we say kena denda. So, kena here is like subject to. So, kena denda subject to be punished. Sebab, sebab is actually the synonym of kerana. But for daily conversation, we prefer to use the word sebab. So, datang lewat sekolah. We don't really say datang lewat ke sekolah. That sounds so formal. So, we say datang lewat sekolah. So, now we move on to the last one for this category. Mampu melakukan sesuatu. So, mampu melakukan sesuatu is able to do something. So, we have three words under this category. Boleh, dapat, mungkin. Boleh, dapat, mungkin. So, boleh is can, boleh is able, boleh is may. However, boleh, it is more suitable in terms of giving permission. In Malay, giving permission is memberi izin. So, give is beri, so giving memberi. Permission is actually keizinan. 
So we shorten that. The root word here is izin. So memberi keizinan or memberi izin. Both are acceptable. So I give example here. This is formal Malay. Abu boleh memakan ais krim selepas batuknya pulih. Abu boleh memakan ais krim selepas batuknya pulih. So, in English it means Abu can eat ice cream after recover from cough. So, boleh, can, memakan, the root word here is makan, eat. Ice cream is ice cream but in Malay we say ice cream. Selepas, after, batuk, cough. So, batuknya here is his cough. Pulih is recover. However, for speaking, we just say, Abu boleh makan ice cream lepas baik batu. So, instead of we use the word pulih or recover, we use the word baik, lepas baik batu. But some people also say like this, Abu boleh makan ice cream lepas pulih batu. But actually, lepas baik is much more common, people say. Okay, now we move on to the next one, dapat. So, dapat is can, able or get or acquire. And dapat is more suitable in terms of ability or capability. So, the usage is suitable on that way. So, I give formal Malay example here. Lily dapat menjawab semua soalan yang ditanya oleh guru. Lily dapat menjawab Semua soalan yang ditanya oleh guru. So, in English it means Lily was able to answer all questions asked by the teacher. So, Lily dapat. Dapat here is able. Okay. So, Lily dapat menjawab from the root word jawab, answer. Semua all soalan is question. Yang is that ditanya from the root word tanya, ask. So, ditanya is actually passive form of it. Oleh is by guru is teacher. However, for speaking, we just say Lily dapat jawab semua soalan yang cikgu tanya. Lily dapat jawab semua soalan yang cikgu tanya. So, instead of we say menjawab, we shorten to jawab only. And instead of we use the word guru, we use the word cikgu. So, we make this sentence active, cikgu tanya. So, ditanya oleh guru is passive form. So, cikgu tanya is active form. So, that's about the word dapat. Now, we move on to the word mungkin. Mungkin is maybe. So, formal Malay, Nunu mungkin selamat jika diberi rawatan oleh doktor. Nunu mungkin selamat jika diberi Rawatan oleh doktor. In English, Nunu may be safe if given treatment by doctor. So, Nunu mungkin, mungkin is maybe, selamat is safe jika if diberi, the root word here is beri, give. So, diberi, passive form, given, rawatan, treatment oleh is by, doctor is doctor. But however, for speaking, we just say, Nunu mungkin selamat kalau doktor rawat. Nunu mungkin selamat kalau doktor rawat. So instead of we use the word jika, we use the word kalau. Kalau means if also, but kalau is more common for daily conversation. So kalau doktor rawat. Rawat here is the root word. So doktor rawat is Active form, diberi rawatan oleh doktor is passive form. So, that's about mungkin. I have to be honest here. Malay often do this mistake. We just don't differentiate between boleh and dapat. As I mentioned, boleh is more suitable to be used for something like getting permission or given permission. And dapat is more like capability or ability but however sometimes people just don't differentiate that and practice the wrong one however i like to show you here how you can differentiate 
the correct one for the sentence. So, I give example here. Kemalangan jalan raya boleh slash dapat dielakkan jika semua pihak memainkan peranan. Kemalangan jalan raya boleh slash dapat dielakkan jika semua pihak memainkan peranan. So, in English it means road accidents can be avoided if all parties play their roles. So, kemalangan is accident. Jalan is road. So, jalan raya actually road also. So, kemalangan jalan raya is road accidents. Can be either boleh or either dapat, right? So, we leave it for why. Avoided from the root word elak. Elak is avoid. So, dielakkan, be avoided. Jika if Semua or pihak is parties memainkan, here is mind play, peranan is role. So, here the correct one is dapat. So, kemalangan jalan raya dapat dielakkan jika semua pihak memainkan peranan. So, dapat here is the correct one because we are talking about the capability. And then I wanted to say also, kata bantu hendak, the help word of Honda not suitable to be used in the question sentence. For example, question sentence or in Malay ayat tanya and mahu is the word which is more suitable to be used because Honda is normally you have intention to do something but mahu is more like you have the desire when there's someone invite you, okay? So, this is like something really Malay. Don't take note that much. So, in case if you don't know, so it's okay. But I just like to share. So, remember, Henda, you have the intention to do something. Mahu, you will have the desire when someone invite you, okay? So, the desire arise due to the invitation. So, I give example here. This is the wrong one. Hendakkah kamu ikut saya ke taman? So, hendak, one. Kah, remember, for question words and then we have kah at the back. It's only apply if the question words at the front, not at the back, okay? So, it's basically to emphasize the question form of sentence. So, hendakkah kamu ikut saya ke taman? Kamu, you, ikut follow. Ikut saya follow me ke tu taman is par. So, hendakkah kamu ikut saya ke taman? This is wrong, okay? So, the correct one for formal Malay, mahukah kamu ikut saya ke taman? So, it's more suitable because mahu is the desire arise. So, there's a desire when there's an invitation. So, basically, in English it means do you want to follow me to the par? However, that is formal Malay, right? For speaking, people say, Nak ke ikut saya pergi taman? Oh, mau ke ikut saya pergi taman? Oh, mahu ke ikut saya pergi taman? So, instead of we say, hendakkah, for speaking, we say, nak ke, and that is common one. Nak ke ikut saya pergi taman? This is the most common form of a sentence for speaking. Mau ke, so, mahu, we shorten to mau. And ke here is you shorten from the word kah. So, mau ke or mahu ke ikut saya pergi taman. I guess that's all the lesson for now. Thank you very much for watching me. And if you like my video, please check out my Patreon page so that I can have more time to make more videos. For those of you who support me through this medium, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who's watching me right now, thank you very much. And till we meet again then. Bye.